Fighting for gay marriage generally involves lying about what we're going to do with marriage when we get there. You know, because we lie that the institution of marriage is not going to change, and that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change, and it should change. And again, I, I don't think it should exist. Marriage, not just your marriage, the institution of marriage, the lifelong union of a man and woman as husband and wife, a personal promise with a public purpose. Here's how it works. There's a variety of relationships between adults out there, boyfriend, girlfriend, same sex, polygamous, or multiple partners. The public purpose is why the law recognized marriage as an institution of husband and wife. It sends a social message about the importance of a dad and mom. Though a husband and wife will not always have children, that doesn't change marriage. Or the profound implications on society from those who do have children. Only a mother and father can uniquely provide children with separate, distinct, and irreplaceable parenting gifts. The more children that receive those gifts and that guidance over time, the more that society benefits, like reduced criminal behavior, a decrease in high school dropouts, less children in poverty, fewer women exploited and children neglected. And that's only a few of the many benefits. Nothing better guarantees those societal benefits than a married mom and dad, which is why marriage serves a unique public purpose. When marriage is weak in a society, those benefits turn into burdens. They become problems the government will have to deal with one way or another. That's why government has always had an interest in making marriage strong. And today, lots of things are weakening it, from adultery to no-fault divorce laws. But the latest challenge is from same-sex activists who seek to redefine the very institution, which will send a new message, making dad and mom an option, undermining the needs and benefits marriage was designed to give society. And if marriage is redefined, why shouldn't other options be included? Polyamory, it's called, in which multiple lovers live together openly under one roof. A woman and two men. No one knows exactly how many polygamists live in this country. A husband, three wives, and 18 children. The head of this plural household? Meet Michael Colley. We would like to start having the debate nationally about polygamy. Same-sex activists tell us ending the exclusion from marriage would strengthen families and would take nothing away from anyone else. Except it hasn't in places where it's already been tried, like Scandinavia, Spain, or Canada, where redefining marriage did nothing to improve falling numbers of people getting married and having children. Redefining marriage did not strengthen marriage in society. But this isn't just about redefining marriage. It's about reordering society and culture. Because we lie that the institution of marriage is not going to change. And that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change, and it should change. And again, I, I don't think it should exist. We're talking about a new bill that's now making its way through our state legislature. It would allow judges to legally recognize more than two parents for a child. But what about children who have more than one set of parents? Well, my husband and I are co-parenting our two daughters with a couple, a lesbian couple. I'm the biological father for both kids, and one of the moms is the biological mother for both daughters. A valley man pregnant, delivering three children. Beatty was born a woman, Tracy, but later underwent a sex change. Governor Brown, though, has just 12 days left to decide whether to force public schools to teach gay history. This mom, who did not want to be identified, got the flyer from school last week, announcing that this Friday would be Gender Bender Day. Boys dress up like girls, girls dress up like boys. Gallaudet University has placed its chief diversity officer on paid leave because she signed a petition that gave Maryland voters a say on same-sex marriage. And as you see there, that is Phyllis Burgess, the woman that we've just identified, and she walked there holding, as you can see, a large cross. Within just moments, it didn't take long for that cross to be pulled out of her hand, and the woman standing by as the cross gets trampled. And Gay rights activists are targeting a Lakewood cake shop Tom, protesters would like to see this cake shop behind me boycotted completely. Philip says he takes every cake personally and won't make a cake for an event he doesn't believe should even exist. Atlanta pastor Louis Giglio, tapped to give the benediction at the president's second inaugural, is now pulling out of the festivity because of a firestorm over his mid-1990s sermon on homosexuality. Well, a same-sex couple 
decides to give their 11-year-old son hormone blockers. They want uh, to give him more time to decide if he wants to be a boy or if he wants to be a girl. The decision to allow a 45-year-old transgender student to use the woman's locker room has upset many parents and faith-based groups in Washington. Now, the student, who identifies as a woman but has male genitalia, is being allowed to use a locker room shared by females at Evergreen College, as well as the high school girls' swim team and the Children's Swim Academy. Redefining marriage, reinterpreting history, reinventing gender, and rewriting freedom. That's why Alliance Defending Freedom has been on the front lines of this issue with our allies. Because for those who wish to change marriage, their purpose has always been about changing society. We have to change the minds. We can't expect any one group to be better on our issues than any other group. We live in a homophobic society. And you know what, the benefits issue is one thing, but that happens relatively in private. That's your relationship to your government. When you're able to go out socially and say, this is my husband, right, or this is my wife, and have people know that your relationship is respected by the church, by the nation, as fully equal to a straight relationship, that matters, right? We are not only fighting for legal equality. We want to transform society, a truly transformative change, change that shifts the very foundations of our society. This is the change that lasts, and this is the change to which we are called. Society turns on the outcome of this debate, a debate not about your marriage, but about the purpose for marriage in society, whether it is upheld as a model for more married moms and dads, or becomes a megaphone for more same-sex activism. The foundations of society are being shaken. Future generations will never hear that a mom and dad matter when having a mom and a dad are merely presented as optional. Redefining marriage undermines society. But strong marriages shelter everything. That's why we work to strengthen and protect marriage because marriage strengthens and protects us.